I'm going to show you how to use the treat and train uh, as far as operating it. The second generation that I have here is called the Manners Minder. It's the exact same thing as this treat and train, which is the third generation. It was rebranded. So it comes with a target stick. This actually does come out of the base as well, and you can extend it, and then you can put it in the base to free stand. And you would teach your dog to touch it with his nose, and then you would activate the machine or pay by hand if you wanted to. It's going to come with two discs, and they have different sizes in the holes. So this is the larger one, and that allows bigger pieces of kibble to fall through versus this would allow small pieces. You can use this larger one for small pieces of kibble too, but it's going to allow more pieces to fall through those holes. You would not want to use this for large kibble because if it can't fit through the hole, it's just going to jam up the machine and the machine's going to get stuck. And then of course it comes with the remote to dispense or start the automatic features. Here's the actual machine itself. So the third generation, again, is the same. It might have a different color button here, but otherwise the options are all the same. Really quick, you can take this tray out. You'll see here, um, sometimes I have to work at it a little bit. There you go. And this tray can come off. Um, if you, I just take it off and hand clean it. I've never put it in the dishwasher. You might be able to. I just haven't done it. And... You can see there's the hole where the food is going to come out of. The reason you would take the tray off is if you wanted to go ahead and put this machine on top of something like your crate and have the food drop down into the crate below, you wouldn't want the tray you, because it would get stopped in the tray. You can also put the machine up uh, on a countertop or a refrigerator if you wanted to and make it look like treats are raining from the sky. So most of the time I have the tray on if it's on the ground. You can also have the tray off if it's on the ground. It just scatters the treats on the floor. And they can chase them, which they like that too. As far as operating, you have your standard on and off button. And by the way, this takes four uh, D batteries, the big boys. Uh, this remote has a battery that comes with the machine. I don't remember what it is. It's a special one. Um, but you can always take it apart and... They can go get the battery you need to replace it as needed. Looking here, you have options as far as single treat, multi treat, and Q dispense. I've got crumbs in my machine. I use this quite a bit, so bear with me here. It's not a brand new machine. You have, if you can see right here on this button, uh, the treat rate. It goes from three seconds right here. There you go. All the way up to 300 seconds, which would be five minutes. This is going to be for the downstay feature, which is basically the automatic setting. Okay, so you would be able to select how often do you want treats to fall out automatically. So if I have it set here at 20, it's going to fall out every 20. Well, we'll switch it over here to very fixed. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, if I have it here on this setting where it's at the 20 second mark on this fixed setting, it means every 20 seconds it's going to spit out food. It's going to activate on its own every 20 seconds. If I change this option here to variable, now it's going to change to where any time between the 3 second and the 20 second mark, it's going to spit treats out. But it may not be at the same time interval each time. So maybe it spits it out at the 5 second mark and then it goes to the 10 second and the 3 second and 15 second. It's a little bit different. When you start a dog off, we always start fixed. I want We got to get the dog kind of hooked into the game. But once the dog is really um, very well versed in what this machine is, then we can go ahead and start flicking it over to variable and make it more of a, a random process as to when the treat comes out when you're doing the automatic setting. Um, when you're training other behaviors, you're probably going to be dispensing it very purposefully, um, just like you would click and treat at that moment. But for the, the actual automatic setting, you're probably going to make it more random. The goal would be if you have a long downstay, that I can get the dog up to the 300 second mark on the variable setting. That means any time between three seconds and five minutes, 
it would spit out a treat and then it would reset and do that again. That could take quite a bit of time to have your kibble or your treats um, actually empty out this machine. So if you were trying to feed your dog a slow meal while you were at work and having it drop treats into the crate or if this was the whole machine was in your kennel, taking the dog some time to eat his meal to occupy him or just slow down his feeding. The discs are really easy to put in. So this is the small disc. Um, get some food here. So before I start, I wanna make sure here's my size of food. Will it fall in the hole? Yes, it will. So I could use either size. Again, you're gonna get more pieces that could fall down in that hole. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the small disc. And you basically are just gonna set this in and it'll, it'll fit only one way and then you kind of click it in place. So you can move it back and forth like that. Now, sometimes this machine will get jammed and it's usually when there's too many crumbs. Maybe you haven't cleaned out the machine in a while. Maybe the food you have is really dusty and the crumbs start to collect on the mechanism in here. And then it just makes it hard for this wheel to turn. Usually when it jams, you can just do this a couple times and all of a sudden a piece of food will spit out and now the, the food is going to um, start to be delivered as expected. Check your machine regularly and clean it out. And you're just gonna take a wet paper towel and just kind of wipe it out and get all the crumbs out of there, okay? It'll save you a lot of hassle if you do that periodically um, as you're using your machine. It shows you how many cups that you can use. I will tell you from experience, I have a hard time filling it up to the three cup line and having the machine function consistently as I would like. It'll get stuck and jammed a lot. So I tend to not fill it up more than this two and a half cup mark. Usually I'll go between two and two and a half cups is where I will fill it. So right now I'm just gonna put, that's one cup's worth. We're just gonna do that, okay? and. I'm gonna go ahead, I wanna make sure, we're gonna look at this button here. This is the volume for the beep. I can turn it off. It goes from low, medium, and high. My channel here, um, your default channel is one, and your remote, if you were to open it, has a toggle switch on the inside, and you would be able to see if it's on channel one, two, three, or four. They need to match, so make sure that's the case. The reason you have more channels is in case you get multiple machines, if you wanted them all to dispense at the same time when you hit the dispense button, you would want all of the machines to be on the same frequency as your remote. If you have different machines and you don't want that to happen, then you're going to have to make sure each machine has its own channel, and then you would be working with multiple remotes. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and just show you, oh, I can hit dispense, and it's going to churn and drop some treats. So, we got two treats out, and this is just kibble again. Sometimes you'll get more than one. Okay, we'll go back up here on this option, single or multi-treat. I have it on single, so basically it's going to spin the wheel, and it's going to make sure that at least something fell out one of the holes. If I have it on multi-tree, it's gonna spin the disc around more time so more treats can fall out of multiple holes in the disc. So I'm gonna do that again. Try that again. Okay, so that didn't, didn't give me as many as I expected, but there you go. Q dispense, I don't use that one a whole lot. Um, it's usually going to be, I have to turn my volume on, and I would have my beep before my dispense. Again, this is all with the downstay feature, so I don't usually cue my dispense on the downstay because it gets really annoying hearing this beep go off all the time, so I would turn the volume off. When I am working with this machine manually, I would go ahead, if I cared, if I wanted to have the access... Uh, of this beep to be like the clicker, put it on one of the volume, low, medium, or high, and as I hit dispense, it'll beep and it'll drop. Okay, so that way you don't have to have a clicker and your remote. You can just use this in itself. Uh, the low sound is pretty loud. That's usually all that's needed in the house. 
unless you have the machine really far from your dog, um, or if you're outside and it's really windy, you're working on distance work, and that's the high. It's pretty loud. So I definitely don't use that volume very much. So I think we've talked about all of the buttons. The down stay is going to be this bottom. I'm going to hit the down stay, and you'll see the light come on. And so now, I'm going to put it on fixed, and we're going to do a smaller time, just so you can see. So now it's on the seven second mark, and we might have to speed that up for the camera's sake. Let's start it again. I'm going to put it on five. <laughs> we don't want to wait all day. So I'm going to turn it back on. So now, every five seconds, it should spit out a treat. And I'm not pushing the button. It Now it's just on its own. So the remote's over there, so you can see it's working all by itself. I have it on the fixed ratio, five seconds. Okay, so for a beginner dog, I would start at probably, probably five seconds. Three seconds is pretty quick. Uh, a lot of times the dogs aren't finished chewing before the next one comes out. Okay, to stop this, I'm just going to go ahead and press the downstay button again, and you should see the light go off. I can also, if the downstay button's on, if I see the dog do something I like, I can always manually dispense without interrupting the downstay um, schedule as well. So that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. Okay, I think that is pretty much everything there is to know about the treat and train. Uh, let's see, any other? I think that's it. So, again, you could put this up on top of something. I'm going to take the tray off. We'll do it without the tray. Put it up here. And I'll go ahead and dispense. So if you had this on top of your kennel, get my remote to work here. My machine sometimes doesn't like, so I'm having a little problem with it. Doesn't like it when I pick it up. I'm gonna just turn it off and then turn it back on, and that usually does enough. There we go. It's a really old machine that I have. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and dispense, and it's just dropping treats to the ground making a mess, but the dogs would love to clean those treats up. So you would just set the machine on top of your crate and aim it to where it's going to fall into the crate with the treats. Or again, have it up on a countertop and let treats rain from the sky. Okay. So if, again, a treat gets stuck... Again, it's really sensitive. It doesn't like when I pick it up and wobble it. It kind of has some sensors in it that uh, when it's off balance, that it'll start blinking or it'll stop activating until you come in. I, just, just turn it off and back on again. That's usually fine. Make sure it's balanced. It doesn't like to be tipped. Um, so if, it's, if you get um, this light blinking and possibly if you have the sound on it might beep at you too it's telling you there's a jam and you would just come in here and do like that and it usually will unstick and then you can start up again and start using your treat and train i'll have more videos on how you can use these treat and trains in different um, sessions where you're teaching your dog different things later on but right now that's just the basics for how do you even use this and what these settings are for again typically I keep it on single treat unless I'm trying to if I'm doing the downstay session I'll keep it on single treat if I want to really extend the amount of time that it takes for the dog to work through this amount of food the multi treat if if I want the dog to be able to eat this amount of food in a quicker amount of time I'm gonna switch it down to multi treat I might also want to increase how often it goes off because if you have longer time periods, this is, you know, 60 seconds, two minutes. If you have longer time periods in between food drops, it's going to take your dog longer to go through this. So you have to think about what your goals are. Are you trying to extend your training session and have your dog stay there longer? Are you trying to keep him entertained while you're gone so you need to take this a little longer? Or do you have an impatient dog who isn't going to wait that long yet? You might want to feed them a little bit quicker and you gradually can make the sessions last longer as the dog can handle it. 
Otherwise, you'll get dogs who start to try to beat the machine up and bang it. This takes a pretty good punch. It's pretty heavy. Um, but again, you know, they can still knock it over if they're really trying to. So we want to make sure that they're not impatient while they're getting used to this particular game. I had one of my clients call it the um, Kraken Train because <laughs> the dogs love it so much. I think that's a pretty accurate description, actually, for the dogs that like it. Um, when you're first starting out with your dog, they may be afraid of it. So to start out, before you even push a button, just drop a few pieces of food and let the dog eat it out of the tray. Keep doing that a few times. Get them used to eating out of this tray because it's a little bit different feel than their regular bowl. And then when they're not close to the machine, but maybe they're near it, not right up against it, but where they can see it, go ahead and press the dispense and let them see the food drop. And then you might have to encourage them to come over and eat. Some of these dogs are scared of the sound of the machine and the fact that food spits out. Wait till your dog eats, then go ahead and let them leave, you know, a couple steps to where they're right, not right next to it because I don't want to scare them, and go ahead and activate it again. They'll probably turn around or take a step towards it. Let them eat, be patient, let them leave again, and do this over and over. Pretty soon what you're going to see is when they hear that sound, their ears are going to perk up and they're going to move to the machine to eat quicker. And pretty soon they're not going to want to leave at all. And that's where you're going to be able to start dispensing where their, their head is pretty close to it or they're standing in front of it just waiting for it to drop. And at that point you've convinced your dog that this is not an evil device, it's not a scary thing, and it's something that um, you can then start utilizing for different training sessions. If your dog is scared of it, you cannot use it for training. You're going to have to condition your dog that this is a fun item before you can use it in a fun way. All right, that's about it for now. I hope you enjoy your treat and train as much as we do.